Hello and welcome back to PR Vision and our fourth video in the series, Generating Real Social Media Wins. In today's digital landscape, social media has exploded and our aim in this video is to show how you can lift yourself above the noise, drive deeper connections with your audience while avoiding negative fallout. My name's Philip Smith, I'm Head of Content Solutions for PR Week and I'd like to welcome to the studio a panel of social media experts. Firstly, many thanks and welcome to our sponsor, Jonathan Bean from My News Desk. I'm also joined by Ian Wright, Corporate Relations Director for Diageo, and Warren Buckley, Managing Director, Customer Services at BT. To start off this video, our panellists are going to give us their three top tips for PR professionals on how best to succeed with social media. I think it's crucial for communicators, marketeers and anyone in social media to ensure that their attitude and their company's attitude to social media engagement is a long-term journey, not just a short campaign. We need to get out of the campaign mindset. My second top tip for companies and organisations being successful in social media is to ensure that PR and marketing are not the owners of social media within their organisations. It needs to be the whole organisation that is socialised, so PR and marketing can be the enablers of social media, but not the guardians of it. My third top tip for PR and communicators regarding social media is to ensure that we realise that we're moving from an era of broadcasting messages to engaging audiences. First of all, don't be bedazzled by the technology. Treat it with respect, but remember it's a channel like any other. Secondly, remember that you've got to respond speedily. You can't just leave something. It has to be dealt with now. Remember that the, the channel might change, so don't put all your eggs in one basket. It might be Facebook, but it might be a MySpace, and getting the wrong one will be damaging for your brand. So don't put all your eggs in one basket. First of all, if you're not already doing something on social media, start. It can be a bit scary, it can look uh, a little bit frightening, but it's really important that you start, but you can start small. When we first started, it was very much using Twitter search or Google, and we built over a period of time. Now we do many thousands now um, of tweets or Facebook, but start and start small. It's the only way to learn. My second top tip really is all about the team that you build. Build it early. Really link up between PR, marketing, sales, public affairs and customer service. This is a great opportunity to bring the PR team much closer to the organisation that probably talks to customers more than any other. In our eyes, we take something like 40 million calls a year from customers. We just weren't as well connected with PR. Great opportunity, build the team early. And the third thing is to really focus on the tone and personality that you want to create. We made a decision to create a slightly different brand, BT Care. You need to really think through that personality. And the individuals who are responding on Twitter or on Facebook, their personality comes through. The language that you use on Twitter is not the same. You don't say, dear sir, I'm sorry, on Twitter. A good example for us is when we're dealing with gamers who've got problems on broadband, we'll often ask for their gamer tag and we'll start talking about them in their language. I think there's uh, constantly a whole number of case studies uh, out there, but the ones I'm interested in are the ones that are actually really providing ROI uh, for, for, for the client or the agency's client. Uh, one of those is uh, the online retailer ASOS, which uh, I know recently took over as the UK's leading online retailer from, I think, topshop.co.uk. Uh, and uh, really, they have social running everything, running through everything that they do, um, from employees uh, to brand advocates. They use all of, the pro all of the platforms that are out there. They have their own online community, ASOS Life. So it's no surprise, really. Um, that their revenues have grown 35%, that their customer base has grown 35%. But what's really interesting is um, that they had, you know, a year ago only 80,000 fans. They now have 1.3 million fans. Uh, and so that growth in revenue and customer numbers can actually be directly related to, to fans. So soon I think that, that fan growth will be actually a, an, an accurate predictor of sales growth. And I think that's uh, quite breakthrough. Warren, welcome to the PR Vision Studio. Can I ask you what 
you think social media means to a company like BT? I think the first thing to say is you can't divide social media up into convenient channels or segments. Um, the nature of social media is is it's the customer um, who decides how they want to use social media. So one of the things we've really picked up and learned is that building a team that works together across PR, customer service, marketing, sales, is all really important because you have to work together. In fact, probably one of the biggest benefits, I think, that we've seen is that it's brought the PR team much closer to the service organisation. Whereas in the past, often what I've found is that PR worked through marketing to each service. We now have a very direct relationship. Do you see content as being a key part of that, getting the content right in your social media initiatives? Content really spreads into two parts, and, and I think that's core in really where you think about social media. One is proactive and the other is reactive. Now, if you're thinking about a proactive campaign, whether that's a marketing campaign or PR exercise, getting that content right, really thinking through not just how the content works in the social space, but how it links up to what you're doing perhaps in your above the line, in your TV advertising, it needs to feel consistent. So if I take something like our Adam and Jane campaign, um, our very successful kind of family-based TV advert over the last few years for for BT, um, if you look at that, we wanted to really engage with our consumers in a different way. So we ran a campaign on Facebook, we put together short videos and we gave people the choice of choosing what dress Jane would wear for the Adam and Jane wedding, what car they'd turn out with, what music they would think of. So actually content proactively was really key there. A good example on a reactive basis is um, a few months ago we had a real problem. We had a fire at one of our major exchanges. It affected millions of customers. We actually got hold of one of the very early pictures from this fire and flood and what had been done to the exchange and what had happened and we tweeted that out that had a phenomenal impact it went from actually customers saying oh I'm really being impacted this by wow can't believe you fixed this this quickly looking at the damage so you've got to be a little bit brave in that but content whether proactive or reactive the more interesting colorful you make it the more the conversation blossoms what dimension is mobile added to social media in this case um, and what are the um, opportunities and problems that this caused? And what mobile has done is truly made it real time. So if I've got a customer who's having a problem perhaps on their broadband line, um, they can still tweet me. So I have to start thinking about how do I address that smartphone environment? I have to think about what content is right for a smartphone that will also work on a PC. Speed is what it's all about and it's the smartphone I think that's particularly driven that. And uh, Broadly speaking, if somebody's going to tweet you, perhaps with a complaint or a comment that you need to respond to, you need to respond within about 60 minutes. That's what we found, right? Anything beyond that kind of loses that real-time element. Actually, they can complain that you haven't responded. Mm -hmm. That's what smartphones have driven. It's that real-time nature of the conversation. I think if if you're a PR professional who's working with your customer service team, you've got to understand that that customer service person is increasingly high profile and public. You can't escape. Certainly in a BT environment, environment all of our letters our emails go out with my name on so I have a role in that as a PR team I need the PR team to be available to me that might be over a weekend so actually whereas in the past perhaps the PR team got a call from the marketing director or the CEO there was likely in BT to get a call from me I need help immediately how am I going to respond what approach are we going to take on this you can't ignore it with social media how do you measure success of individual brands and campaigns if you're doing a proactive campaign monitoring the number of new lives likes that you get on Facebook, there may be the number of Twitter followers that you get, maybe the number of videos that are watched on YouTube. They're, they're all good to do and I think important to do early on. However, you do need to develop that insight. So I think the second thing that you can do is go into a layer of really understanding the content. So when we're running a new campaign or making a new announcement, the social media team will track what's happening on each of the channels and produce often a report every two hours. On Twitter, it will be how many comments there have been, how often they were retweeted and what the total audience was. On Facebook, it will build out to, again, how many people have commented on the wall, how many referrals you've actually got on that basis. The third area that you can look at, and this is particularly important, I think, when you're looking at proactive campaigns, is a standard return on investment approach. If you're spending an amount of money doing a certain number of people on Twitter, um, trying to drive a campaign on Facebook and advertising, then you should be able to directly link that back to the money you save in terms of reduced calls into your service centre or the number of increased calls you get into sales and how many sales you get. Now that third element takes time to mature 
it is worth making the investment early to build that model, but understand it will need to iterate over time. How do you evaluate the context and whether people are being positive or negative about something? If you're just starting out or perhaps if it's in a reactive environment, you can look at that directly. But there are also some very good tools around that it's worth exploring that actually can track that and actually read and pick up the tone of a tweet or the tone of a comment on the wall of Facebook. It's definitely worth looking at and they can read, pick up and turn that into really quite impressive graphical interfaces. Ian, welcome to the PR Vision Studio. Thank you. Um, In your opinion, do you see social media at Diageo as a threat or an opportunity? I think we probably see it as both. I mean, clearly it's here to stay. Clearly the change that it has wrought both in our working and personal lives is huge. And I think the, the main key to managing social media is to, is to use it. Um, I think also you have to be aware of its limitations and you also have to be aware of the dangers. For us, one of the big dangers of social media is the unmoderated conversation. It has to be something that marketers, human resources people, finance people understand because quite often they're drawn into these conversations. So they have to understand the limits of them as well. With brands, we're so used to talking about campaigns and initiatives. But of course, social media demands that you're always on, that you're always communicating with the consumer, irrespective of whether that brand is actively promoting mm-hmm. itself or actually it's, it's, it's in a quieter period. How do you get round that and what is the challenge there for the communicator? I think that, well, I think there are two challenges. One is just having the resource to, to be always on. Um, And it's not just a resource of money, it's time, it's attention. You can't leave it for another week to change that particular, to to deal with that particular issue. You have to be there in 20 minutes or half an hour or the moment's gone. And sometimes it damages your reputation. We've had examples where people in in conversations going on with consumers have said things which frankly are either libelous or really quite dangerous in this uh, market situation in which we're operating and we've had to take them down very very quickly so I think that requires a level of resource it requires a level of management it also requires a level of judgment that that actually is is going to have to be constant And I suppose the challenge for people allocating that resource is to find a way to do so without it becoming all-consuming. And with the corporate website in mind, how do you use social media to signpost things that are happening there and stuff that's happening with Diageo? One thing we've just started to do with our results recently was to use Twitter as a signpost. So we will tweet the fact that material has been uh, loaded on our YouTube site or our YouTube channel or on our corporate website. I guess it's a very, very baby step, but it is an indication that we recognise that people see Twitter as an important means of keeping up to date. Where have you seen good examples of creative thinking and creativity in social media? Well, I think the one that made the most impact on me recently was the kind of viral campaign to release Ai Weiwei, the Chinese activist and artist, just around the time of Wen Jiabao's visit to the UK. That was incredibly powerful, and it moved very quickly. Now, he was released. I don't know whether the two were related, but it certainly raised attention and raised the, uh, his issues very much in the minds of people like me who, who had really never heard of him before. So social media in that example, it's, it's a good way of getting cut through to people that you may not normally reach. I think it has a huge splash effect. You know, I mean, I think it can reach thousands, maybe millions of people. And obviously that's, that's a huge success for the people on behalf of that issue. Jonathan, in the wider business context, how do you see social media? Is it an opportunity or a threat? I mean, I, I see it only as an opportunity, actually. I know many businesses, and particularly PR and communications professionals, uh, see it as a threat. But I, I think as long as it's tying in with a clear business objective, uh, it can only be an opportunity for an organisation uh, if they're brave enough to take that opportunity. And where does communications fit in on that? Do you think that that makes it even more important? I mean, PR and communications has been changed fundamentally um, by social media. Um, But actually, what hasn't changed is the customer. The customer still expects a good product uh, at a fair price with excellent customer service. Uh, And I think that's where we need to focus. That customer needs consistent messaging. The best people for messaging are communications professionals. But what we need to understand is that actually the best people to tell a company's story are the employees at large, not just the PR communications professionals. So PR professionals um, are the enablers of social media within their organisations, but they should not be the guardians of it. 
in terms of businesses trying to use uh, social media efficiently and get the most out of it, how do you think they should be set up? Particularly if you look at the internal organisation of a company, what's the best way to get the most out of social media? Yeah, I think actually to, to, to get your mindset out of social media campaigns is the key thing and see it as a long term organisational change within your within your organisation. Of course, you need the right processes, you need the right structure, um, and you need the right tools to be able to, to, to be able to do that and succeed. But essentially, uh, it needs to be that the business is becoming social, and not just the PR department or the communications department. Um, you know, and the key to that is an engaged employee workforce across the board. Of course, you need to put in policies um, to start with. And if you look, uh, you know, to keep it simple is, is, is the key. You look at three companies uh, which have done it, I think, very successfully. Um, Kodak has been excellent on, on looking at disclosure, you know, what employees should do when they disclose themselves on, on, on the social web. If you look at uh, Intel, they've been excellent in talking about moderation. Their motto is uh, the good, the bad, but not the ugly which means it's perfectly okay to have negative comment. But, you know, if it is actually anything offensive, uh, then they should moderate that comment, whereas some companies like to take away negative comment um, just because it's negative. And if you, look at, um, if you look at IBM, for example, they've done great work. Actually, I think IBM have probably one of the best social media policies out there, simply, you know, 12 points. Um, but where I really admire it is, is where it talks to their employees about creating value and adding value to the social web. And that's really key to organisations. What about also the fact that, you, you, in a way, you have to empower your employees to, to get involved with social media, it seems to me? Your employee may have the best, best expertise in the world on his or her particular subject, but that doesn't mean that necessarily he's going to be the world's best blogger uh, or he's going to produce the, the, the best tweet. Uh, but he will live and he will learn. And the more and more the organisation uses the different platforms, they'll realise the different opportunities that are out there um, uh, and, and they'll thrive. So in terms of those processes... You go back to the guidelines that you talked about and needing to have some, some really sort of specific guidelines and processes and points for the, um, for the employee to follow. Yeah, sure. I mean, if you're going to empower a large organisation to become social, then you do need those those processes in place. But what you need also is is the people, uh, and you need to engage those people, and, and and that's crucial. And you also need tools for those people to manage, you know, multiple social media accounts, or actually engage on the web, and most importantly, to actually listen to um, the audience um, uh, of the brand. How do you measure success in that case? Because obviously ROI is a big buzzword as well. Mm. Um, How do you measure the success of that interaction? I I think ROI is absolutely crucial. And and, and ROI, uh, companies themselves need to define what ROI means to them in social media. So for some companies, it will be, um, you know, how can it generate sales? Uh, And that's where social commerce comes in. For some companies, it will be about profitability. It will be about cost saving. Um, You know, can they actually reduce the costs of a product launch or an advertising campaign? by the use of social media and not the traditional print channels maybe that they've been uh, been using. What companies do you think have made those changes or started to go on that process of change to get the most out of this new communications environment? I think there are many companies that, are, that have done it. A uh, number of companies that spring to mind, uh, Dell have done it very successfully. Um, Intel have done it very successfully. But I think probably one of the company that actually started it, and that was three years ago now, um, was Cisco. Um, 2008, before that, they were very traditional in their marketing and communications. Um, uh, and actually, they, they experimented. They took a bet. They took one of their biggest um, launches, which was the... Um, aggregated services router, uh, an extremely sexy piece of kit, <laughs> I'm sure. Um, and they decided to, to, to go down the route of actually um, launching that purely online. Um, and, you know, what they did there was they looked at the audience that they were trying to reach, and they were trying to reach a, a bunch of network engineers. Where were those network engineers? Well, back then, those network engineers were on Second Life. Uh, so they actually uh, created a, a place on Second Life to launch the product. They were also in the gaming world. I think 18% of network engineers were in the gaming world. So they, they created a game, uh, a 3D game for network engineers, where they, they battled to save the network, won £10,000, and a router. 
later. Uh, of course, they also did, um, uh, you know, they, they did uh, things like uh, Facebook and, and Twitter and blogs. They also used their own technology. They used their video conferencing technology to, 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 to bring this audience from around the world to this product launch. Um, and I think not necessarily the things that they did were the interesting things, but it was actually the results and the ROI that they could prove. So whereas the traditional product launch they had, um, you know, they flew in 100 senior journalists and analysts, industry analysts, to a, to a place in, in, in California. Um, there they had 9,000 people attend this product launch. That's 90 times what they would usually have. Uh, one of the things that they highlight as, as an ROI is they, they saved 42,000 gallons of fuel. Um, and for many companies with strong CSR programs, that's important. Um, they actually, if you take it back to a traditional context from what communicators are actually um, tasked with, they got three times the amount of um, traditional media coverage uh, through that launch. Um, um, and, and essentially, the ROI was there, what they could show to the board and what they could show to the accountants, which are key in this process of getting the buy-in and the engagement in social media, is that it cost one-sixth of a traditional product launch, um, which equated to about $100,000. So for them, that process started the organisational change and started Cisco saying that everything we do now should be social, should have an element of social in it. Uh, and now they're held up as a, as, a, as, a, as a thought leader in social media across the world. In your own business at my news desk, how important is social media to what you do as a business? It's vital. I mean, we help clients with marketing their content. Uh, uh, that That's our business. But if you look at our own business, I mean, we're a business that's grown from uh, 20 to 100 people in the last two years. Um, that's obviously involved a lot of recruitment, uh, and recruitment costs money. Uh, and what we looked at was actually how could we leverage uh, how could we leverage social media to, to improve that? So looking at our own employees' social connections and social graphs and interacting with them has actually cut our recruitment costs by by, by half. Um, also, one of the, the issues is we've gone from one office uh, to, to, to eight offices around the world. Uh, and one of the biggest things that we have to do there is make sure all of our employees in all of our in locations are engaged. Uh, so what we did there is we clearly set up a Facebook people group, not an intranet, not a company intranet uh, that's very boring. We actually went to the place where people are at. So our employees are all on Facebook. So we set up a group within Facebook. And you know, now everyone communicates around the world, wherever they are, with video, with pictures. Um, and, and that's really a hugely important part of our employees being engaged and motivated in their day-to-day -day job. Um, so, so, so for us, it, it's, it's been um, you know, a huge part, not just of our product, but of our company culture. When you're using social media and want to have an impact and make a splash, how far can you push it? Um, I think you can push it quite far, and many people and marketers and communicators will probably say it depends how big your budget is. A couple of campaigns actually that have caught my eye um, recently have been uh, been from Intel, um, which has been the uh, Museum of Me, um, where you can actually sign in with your Facebook uh, profile uh, and actually walk around a 3D museum of your friend's content. Uh, and that's fascinating. Uh, of course, they have huge resources to, to, to do that. Another, another one has been, uh, been Cisco, Cisco themselves, um, who have uh, had, I think, about over 3 million views on YouTube for a project called The Future of Shopping, uh, where a woman actually goes into a store uh, and tries on uh, a whole bunch of clothes uh, virtually, uh, obviously based on Cisco technology. But I think that's been very clever. But it is more and more difficult. There are thousands of viral campaigns out there that are trying to catch attention. So I think you do need to do something different. How do you get people to push your brand and how do you get other people to be enthused about what you're doing? I think brand advocacy is everything uh, within social media because actually no one really cares what you as a brand say, but they care what uh, the users and the customers of your, of your brand say. Um, so I think it's very important for any organisation to ensure they have the correct listening tools uh, in place to be able to listen to their brand advocates um, actually and act on what they're saying. So it's actually crucial that you, you, you listen and you find out who the influencers of your brand are, that you have uh, tools that can actually showcase your content uh, and that actually vitally that you can build a network around your content uh, because that will be key and that will ensure that it's not you pushing out your message but it is the tens and hundreds and thousands of brand advocates uh, that, that, that push your message for you. Well I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of our speakers and of course thank you to all for watching. Please do remember to register or log in for all the extra material on social media and do join us again for the next video in our PR Vision series.